Hey everybody, welcome back to uh, our video and we're on part three right now of our series on um, why judo pins work. We've gone over uh, spinal control and we've gone over the concept of sag hug and contour. Now we're going to talk about transitions, right? So this is the idea of remaining a step ahead of the opponent. So we call it being proactive versus, versus being reactive. So when we're holding our, our opponent in a pin, we don't necessarily have to just stubbornly just hold onto that single pin. There are, just like there are um, good mechanics being used in applying the pin, there are good mechanics used for when uh, executing a proper escape from the pin. So if a person is escaping from the pin and you just stubbornly hang onto that, that one pin, pretty good chance that they're gonna escape or recover guard or that type of thing. So it's a good idea to have um, mobility in mind so you can shift from one pin to another. Now if you're in a judo contest and you're pinning somebody down and you shift from one pin to another, the clock continues to count. Right? So this counts as one continuous pin. And so that's a good plus when you're, uh, when you're working in, in a judo atmosphere. Um, for jiu-jitsu, it means staying a step ahead of the opponent. So as they're trying to uh, progress and, and make an escape, you're able to continue to wear them down, continue to exhaust them. And then from there, that's usually when people are exhausted when they're gonna make a mistake and stick an arm out or expose their neck or do something to give you the opportunity to, uh, to uh, uh, tap them out with the submission. And you're already in a position, already in a strong position. So position before submission, you're already there. You already have the positions. Every pin that we go through in the judo pins has numerous submission opportunities. So. Um, so that's the idea. We're wearing them out until they make, make a mistake, until they're exhausted to the point where they um, make that critical error and then we can capitalize on it. So um, just a couple of examples of that. Um, if Brian, you leave your hip in that, that direction. One of my favorite combinations that I've used over the years is to go from Munigatame, right, so nice and tight here. When Brian starts to wiggle and he gets his frame, he starts to make this frame right here, he's getting ready to shrimp, right? So he's going to shrimp and he's going to make Recover, he's going to recover guard. So how we stop that is I slide my knee along his, his, his body line right here and bring his elbow back up. So I call it stealing the frame. So once he's here, I slide that knee up. Now, normally I'm going to hold on to the arm, but I'm just kind of showing how my knee actually pushes his arm out of the way. Now I can secure the arm, right? So from here, I'll go back to the moon egotomy. So as he's starting to facilitate his escape from this, I go back. I control his head again, right? So I get back in here nice and tight. I kind of stole his frame. He can't get that in my hip right away. He, of course, is going to wiggle until he can get that frame in there. Gets the frame in there, I steal it again, right? And now very often what happens is after we've gone through this a couple times, is as I come back up, there's a good chance that he may try to just shrimp his body without having a frame. When that happens, very often go ahead and just kind of turn. My knee goes across the belt line. Are we still in frame here, Jesse? Yeah. Okay. My knee goes across the belt line, and from here, it's very easy to transition to the mount, right? And the whole time that this has been happening, he's exhausting a lot of energy. I'm really exhausting not much energy at all, right? Most of my energy is just by talking about it right now. So let's do it one more time. So again, we're here. Moon got him in nice and tight. Got my knee and elbow connected to keep his frame out of the way. As soon as he gets that frame in, I do a little sit out. I collect his arm. I'm contouring into position. I'm rolling my, my rib cage up into his diaphragm. How's that feel, Brian? Wonderful. Feels great. Okay. So from here, I come back up and I might go through that sequence a couple of times and hold the guy there. But most likely what's going to happen is he gets anxious and he's going to try to shrimp from right here. And as he does, I just bring the knee across, almost like a knee in the belly position. In judo, it would be called ukigatame, floating hold. And then I'm gonna walk my fingers up, knee to the floor, secure my mount position. So in judo, that's called tate shiogatame, meaning uh, straddling four corners hold, right? So that's the concept of, of transitions. Um, the reason why it works well for the top person and against the bottom person has a little bit to do with some other scientific things like gravity and friction um, and mobility, right? Um, the gravity is my weight on top of him. That's working against him. The friction, he has to deal with the mat, that surface of the mat. 
He has to deal with the surface of my body versus his body, right? Um, and the mobility, his mobility is wrong because of that. And I have mobility, so it allows me to be a step or two ahead of him the whole, the whole time. So in any of those positions, anything could happen. An arm could come out. There's numerous submissions that are done from every one of those positions that we were in. So thanks for watching the video. If you like it, give us a thumbs up. Uh, be sure to subscribe to our channel to get more videos like this and click on the notification bell so that you get notified when we do the next, our next videos. So um, stay in touch and we have places to go, people to throw.